Well, 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 welcome back to the late day wrap up. Yeah, the lightning round, perhaps you might even call it. And with that said, we're going to be going over Dixie, all the major US dollar pairings. Uh, well, maybe not all the major US dollar pairings. What I mean to say is NASDAQ, SPY, gold, and uh, follow up on Bitcoin, maybe even Ethereum as well. So with that said, uh, trying to make this as fast as possible as I do need to get on a call. But more importantly, with Dixie, what do we see? Still the same range of operations. And I might as well just do this uh, chart right here. Actually, no, this is the same chart. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we hit the $91 resistance from last week. We said very likely sells back down probably back down towards the bottom side of the range of which we do see a move in progress down there right now and if I just call it are we gonna get further continuation down to the 89 and three quarters uh, region it's looking likely on the daily and the lower term time frames as we do get a bit of a sell-off in the early morning hours uh, four hour RSI kind of telling the story right here and four hour Stokes both come down at the same time uh, it does look to me like that, that, that yes we probably do see somewhere right below about 90 bucks but uh, but still I do look for this to range on the whole and more importantly over time I would be looking for it to put in a few wicks down around here maybe even a few wicks lower than this region I've been saying for the last uh, few weeks but as long as this area does hold on a closing basis again 89 and three quarters I do look at this as likely a macro low being put in place similar to what we saw back and over here in 2018 as this took about three months on the actual lows before that we saw a macro reversal way the hell back on over here in June 2011. Same thing, about three months on the lows before reversal. And the time before that in May 08, same thing on the reversal. And then, of course, if we go back over here to 05, 95, and even uh, all the way to 92, very, very similar responses where we do see price action taking about two to three months uh, for the most part and, and, then, uh, and then putting a bit of reversal. So with that said, I'd essentially be looking for a range in activity right here. And with that coming down, that probably does benefit uh, the U.S. market. Is it going to be benefit Bitcoin? Well, doesn't look like it right now to spoil the surprise but uh, but with that in mind we'll go down the list and start it off with uh, NASDAQ of which where is my NASDAQ right now 30 uh, 13,500 so we are seeing continuation to that upside target that we spoke about uh, I think maybe not in this morning's video, but the but yesterday's uh, analysis, as I don't think I covered on this morning's video. But yeah, still 13,600 would be the next area. Although you could say that we pretty much already retested that region, or sorry, tested that region yesterday. This is a very, very strong read right here. I, I don't think that this is going to produce another pullback. It, maybe if you're on a very short term time frame, yes. Oh, there we go. Bitcoin is moving right now. That was actually a big alert, I think. Um, and I'd actually be looking for a move towards the 618 down around, or sorry, up around 13,825. So a continuation implied, looking very, very good coming to the end of the month right here as the weekly does get lift off moving on to spy futures what do we see we don't see a chart there we go ha, there's a chart and very similar except not as strong as nasdaq right now so nasdaq certainly leading the world markets uh, short-term target has almost been hit at 38.75 i'd be looking for a short-term pullback off there and then likely a move above 3900 with that in mind let's move over to gold where is my damn gold there we go gold 1850 ish region still got the same thing to say about this on the weekly i would i really wouldn't use uh lower term time frames on this right now because it is in a bit of a decision phase. I do think it's possible to come back down and swipe around 1830 to 18, uh, yeah, 1830 to 1820 region. But ultimately, the weekly is what I'd be looking at right here because it actually does have a chance to put in a bit of a reversal. We do have a potential higher low in place, but I really need to see this confirmed by closing the weekly above 1862 or whatever the 21 ex uh, exponential is. If that does happen, I would still feel confident looking for 1950 and beyond. But for right now, it's a bit in limbo, and I really want to see where it closes on end of week before kind of uh, going deeper into that one. Anyways on to Bitcoin we go following up from this morning's analysis we did say 30 th or sorry likely a test to the bottom side of this range today based off of the failure yesterday below this critical level right here at 33750 ish region and actually we just got that right there that's what that alert was for it looks like we probably do get a little bit of a uh, wick to the downside here at the very least but I would be looking for bounces anywhere within this region if we are in the daily it should it could be another test down to the 55 right here which is actually uh, 29300 ish region but it's all about closures right here so there's something that actually is really 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 bad potentially in line for this but at the end of the day i still stick with what, with what i've been saying and i've been getting a lot of questions about this like crown why are you so bullish it's like <laughs> i'm never bullish enough for the fucking bulls and i'm never bearish enough for the fucking bears it's actually kind of funny that's what it means to like not be in a fucking gang right and actually be a trader i suppose but more importantly with this and without all the uh, silly asides what I'd say with this is that, yes, you know, there, there's certainly very, uh, very many concerning things here. But as I've been saying for the last uh, almost month now, you know, until Bitcoin really officially breaks below the $30,500 pivot right here on a, you know, at the very least a four hour, but preferably a 12 hour or daily, then I really wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I still I still kind of uh, reserve the right to remain silent now <laughs> to, uh, to, you know, to not flip around. That's just my personal proclivities as a trader. I really don't like, um, you know, calling reversal and then more importantly, playing into the reversal 
reversal until it actually has confirmation. And, and for myself, this is your confirmation right here. This whole move uh, within this region has been more or less consolidation. And with the failure, especially of yesterday's rally to get back above uh, 35,000 bucks, that was a pretty damn significant thing, actually, as that was, uh, you know, as that was the pivot. Once it came back down 33,750, that's what initiated this test down around here um, that we spoke about yesterday. And looks like we do, are getting a little bit of a bounce off this blue box right now. But I don't think that this is done just yet. We do see that momentum oscillators are all on the south side right now. We see four hour stokes, nice and uh, flaccid AF to the downside. Three hour stokes doing the same thing, same place, and will remain to the downside as long as below 32,500. Buy hourly is showing what? Uh, actually, we'll cross back to the upside with any sort of a closure above 31,350, but <laughs> we're even below that level right now, too. And the hourly is showing what? Actually, having a fresh cross the downside with any sort of a closure below 31,420. So that's actually going to happen and be confirmed in the next 11 minutes and 13 seconds. I'd even look at that as probably going to be actionable for, for sending Bitcoin back down below 30,000 bucks. Uh, 229,500 or 29,000 even, whatever it ends up being. Again, daily 55 is kind of where we'd be looking for maybe an intermediate bounce off of, but it all is going to come down to where those higher term time frame closes uh, happen. If they do happen below that pivot, then yes, I'm going to, you know, I've been saying this for a long time too. I would be looking for a move down to about 23 to 24,000 bucks. But until that happens, I do still look at this area as a potential basin area. It doesn't look good right here. Fuck no, it doesn't. Are there major problems with it? Absolutely there are. But if we do see a closure below, again, this level, then not only will we see that uh, well, structure broken, which is bad enough, but more importantly, and all the momentum also is to the downside as well. But more importantly, we're going to see trending, uh, trending, trending indicators also switch to the downside. You see the 10 symbol and the 21 expansion average right here. I'll actually be releasing a video on a strategy with that a little bit later. I think actually tomorrow, I have another strategy video coming up uh, tonight, actually. Um, and so if that does cross the downside, that, that usually is an actionable thing as well. And, you know, there will be bounces along the way, obviously. twenty uh, Low $27,000 would be an area of interest. Um, and then twenty three to 24000 bucks, where I'd be looking towards, see what the volume profile says here. Uh, a little bit of interest, yeah, a little bit of interest around 27,000 bucks. And then we got a little bit at 23 to 24. And then we got the big bad one down around here at about 19,000 to 20,000 bucks. So, uh, I wouldn't necessarily uh, call a full on move down like that just yet. I would be looking for 23 to 24 again if this condition is met. But for right now, you know, it's probably going to try to bounce off this region. Does it, you know, does it do its best Houdini attempt to get it, to get away from this area as well? Perhaps yes. I mean, looking at the volume profile, I mean, this, this is like a very bad volume profile, by the way. <laughs> Rejection right at the point of control and then straight down. Ugh, ugh, not good. But again, I, I do operate off of closures here. So uh, for myself, until it actually officially is broken, I will not switch around uh, my personal trading behaviors. Um, but of course, you know, everyone out there is free to do whatever the fuck they want to do. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. And I really sh fear the kind of person who just looks at like these videos as like a basically like a trade signals group to begin with. Uh, understand if you're that type of person, you're best off unsubscribing from this channel because what I'm doing is I'm just giving out, you know, exactly what I'm looking at and and how I kind of am look and, and managing these pivots and then that might or might not be relevant to your own personal style so fair enough I mean I, I feel like anytime that you talk about something bullish or bearish people think that like that's off to the moon or down to the doom and it's like no more or less things are ranging here and this is the time really to be playing options as it is I'm curious if there's anything on the higher term time frames to be aware of yeah two day could have a chance to break below the 21 right here Coming in where? Coming in around 31,000 bucks. Uh, three day is not closing tonight, I don't believe. Yeah, it's not closing tonight. Tomorrow night. So I, I don't think it's appropriate to talk about that just yet. But again, 12 hour and daily both look <laughs> a little bit silly here. Even the 12 hour closing below 31,750 is going to look bad enough as we do see momentum also is turned to the downside, uh, or sorry, stay to the downside uh, as trend is, well, quite literally a downtrend. We see lower lows and lower highs on the 12 hour. Now moving on over into the daily, especially if 30,500 is broken. And that would all start with with a four hour closure below there. So with that in mind, I do want to wish you the best, the best and the haps, the happiest. Oh, I should also talk about the upside as well. Um, you know, the only thing that would make me, you know, short term uh, is not relevant within this region because right now short term, I mean, you know, the downside is pretty much uh, played out for the short-term move. Uh, but if Bitcoin did get back above yesterday's rejection, that would instantly make me bullish actually for a move all the way back up to 39 to 40,000 bucks over the next few days. But as you can see, that's well and far away. So I like to talk about things that are more relevant to the current price actions posturing. So with that said, um, I'm going to sign off right there. I want to wish you the best, best and the happiest, happiest. Stay safe. And until next time.